And we're back here at the Kenya International Sports Film Festival 2020, the virtual edition. That was In the Red, a film about uh, motorsport, cycling in particular, uh, from the United Kingdom. And uh, before we go any further, um, there are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes to make Kenya International Sports Film Festival 2020 virtual edition happen. We have a lot of partners and we like to appreciate them. We have uh, Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology. We have Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. We have Kenya Film Commission, whereby you film Kenya, you capture Africa. We have the Federation International Cinema Television Sportifs, or FICTS. Aristocrats Insurance Brokers Limited, Occidental Insurance, you live life confident. The Chartered Institute of Arbitration, Evolving to Resolve. Executive Healthcare Solutions, Africa Post Office, Post Production Facilities, Zebra Productions, The Kareem's Sporting Dynasty, Signs TV, I Gamato Studios, If It Ain't Live, It Didn't Happen, Sports Legal, Moots Tech, Technology Redefined, and of course, Sports Monthly Magazine, the only authoritative sports magazine, not only about Kenyan sports, but in sports in general. That being said, sports has various aspects to it. And there is something called refugee sports. And our next discussion is on sports as a peace building initiative and morale booster with global refugee communities. And we have our brand ambassador as um, one of the panelists. And this is of course, Madam Tegla Lurupe. And Tegla is a Kenya International Sports Film Festival 2020 brand ambassador, a former world marathon record holder, and a global peace ambassador. She was the chief uh, de mission of the refugees team to the 2016 Rio Olympics. And in 2006, she was named a United Nations ambassador of sports. She's also an international sports ambassador for world athletics. We are also joined by a gentleman by the name of Mr. Bernard Rono, and he serves with the United Nations Commission, High Commission on Refugees, UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency as Senior Project Associate, and works together with the International Olympic Committee, World Athletics, Athletics Kenya, Tegla Lurupe Peace Foundation, and other stakeholders to nurture refugee sports talent. Then I believe we'll also be joined by a lady by the name of Rose Lokonyen Natike. And she is a refugee from South Sudan, currently in Kenya. She competed at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games as part of the first ever refugee Olympic team. She has been involved in many other athletics competitions, including the World Athletics Championship in Doha in 2019, where she set a personal best in her 800 meters event. Rose is also a motivational speaker and addressed the 2018 United Nations Human Rights Council Social Forum in Geneva, Switzerland. Welcome. Initially, we had a panelist by name of Sean Cardovillis, a renowned sports journalist, radio presenter, and personality, with 24 years work experience spanning from various networks. But unfortunately, uh, Sean could not be with us for various reasons. He does send his apologies. And so it is left to me, Chris Kamal, to moderate this session. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm going to start with uh, Ambassador Tegla Rope. Tegla, in uh, 2016, in Rio, you were the chief de mission for the um, refugee team. Um, kindly explain to us exactly what this entailed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Rono, Nadike, and uh, the other people who are listening to us. Uh, when we talk about refugees, uh, at least it was the first time that uh, we were able to thank the athletes uh, for the Olympics. And it was not just speaking the athletes for the Olympics, but we had to work very hard together with the U.S. and also the Kenya government. And our sponsors uh, from the uh, National Olympics and uh, IOC and uh, IAAF and other sponsors. So it took time that our athletes were able to train and um, 
when uh, it was a difficult uh, journey and uh, i'm really proud that uh, through the difficult uh, situation that i uh, also grew up as, a, as an athlete as a kid from a uh, um, conflict area uh, to work together with the refugees who have been going also through hardship it was kind of like um, it was familiar when they when they cry i know what it means and we worked as a family but then then we went to uh, rio is when we realized or when the whole world uh, realized that the athletes called refugees they are not refugees but they are athletes and that's why we were able to compete with others and you we are very well recognized for me i was like a mother and a sister and mm -hmm. also you don't know what other people what the reaction of people in the whole world when they see people uh, called refugees normally people uh, when they hear refugees they think these people are very bad people but not knowing that the circumstances can make somebody uh, to leave their family and therefore we we were not expecting to be uh, welcomed but it was very uh, it was a wonderful event for us because the whole world welcomed us and even also the athletes the national athletes came to welcome us and uh, above all my Kenya government to send a, a, a team of refugees also a kept the mission and also kept the mission from Kenya mm. I was really proud to have a country so together with the uh, UNHCR, you run an athletics project for refugees. Um, are you hoping to make it to Tokyo in uh, 2021 for the Olympics? And if so, what are the arrangements, especially now that uh, COVID-19 is a concern? Uh, you are directing the same thing to me? Yes. Uh, well, uh, as, as you <laughs> thank you very much. It has, be, it has become very difficult for the whole athlete, the whole world. But I think more that uh, our refugees are actually have more disadvantage because they went back to, to, to Kakuma. While the Kenyan athletes, uh, at least when they are at, at home, they can stay in different places, but this high altitude, they go together and train. Mm -hmm. So we are working together with the UNSHR and also the government of Kenya to see that uh, very soon to bring our athletes so that they can have a place to, uh, to train with, uh, with the security um, measures. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like a, a, we, you are running a, a, a marathon, but you still need a lot of a, a lot of distance. You, need, you still need a lot of a distance to cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bernard, have world sporting bodies been supportive of uh, refugees in sports? And if so, uh, could you give us some of these examples? Yeah, um, Chris, uh, thank you very much, Chris. Yes, um, UNSCR, um, of course, works with um, uh, with so many uh, world bodies in sports, actually. Uh, world Athletics is one of them. IOC, International Olympic Committee, is another. Last year, we had a forum in Geneva, uh, the Global Refugee Forum, in which so many actually, um, of an, uh, world bodies pledged their support to us. Of course, for us, um, uh, um, the first one is, of course, um, the Tekla Lorupe Peace Foundation, who have been absolute supportive um, as we support all the refugees to ensure that um, that um, they take part in our competitions across the world. But we've also had the um, um, International Judo Federation, the Special Olympics, International Paralympic Committee, Badesh English and Republic of um, Ireland Football Associations, um, AC Milan, Barcelona, Council of Southern African Football Associations, um, NOC in Kenya here, um, and so many others. I think really uh, the message from all the world bodies is really that um, refugees just uh, need a platform. We need to support them to nurture their talents. They are as talented as um, any other uh, top uh, sports people across the world. And they just really just need that chance and they'll be able to, uh, to perform for us um, absolutely well. Thank you. You, Chris. you mentioned the International Olympic Committee. And uh, in 2020, UNHCR <laughs> won the IOC's Olympic Cup. What does that mean for displaced persons across the world? Um, thank you again, Chris. Yes, um, in 2020, as you rightly mentioned, we won the Olympic Cup by the International Olympic Committee. Um, and that was really for our work supporting refugees and their host communities through sports and in promoting the values of the Olympic movement all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, what that means, um, as it was mentioned by, uh, by uh, UNHCR, um, really it's a tribute. Uh, to share with um, all the colleagues, all the um, all the partners across the world, who are 
of Kumbuyong to bring opportunities to uh, um, uh, basically at refugees um, across the world. Really, sport for us is a crucial pillar um, to protect refugees. It gives them opportunities to be able to um, to uh, go up there, do something that will get them off um, any other use of society. It's not just for us about the physical benefits. Uh, sports. It supports physical and mental well-being, teamwork, friendship, and respect for all refugees across the world. It fosters understanding, really, Chris. Um, you know, it, force, uh, it fosters a um, relationship between communities. For us, for instance, refugees and the host communities in Kakuma and the Dab um, use sports as a tool to uh, peacefully coexist. Um, and really, that means a lot for us, uh, especially as we engage young people who make up roughly about 60 to 70 percent of the population of refugees um, in our refugee camps. When uh, refugee teams go and participate in, sport, in sporting uh, competition, um, how do you attribute like uh, when a certain team wins? Is it to the, the country from which the person is seeking refuge or are they all in the umbrella of the UNHCR? How, how, how do you attribute credit? Um, I'm sure um, the chef de monsieur um, would be able to answer that very well. But maybe I could just say that um, refugee athletes compete under the Olympic flag. Um, so really they compete under the Olympic flag. They, um, they all um, compete out there to show the world that uh, forcibly displaced persons who stand at about 90 million uh, at the moment who are, of course, refugees, stateless people, I, I internally displaced, um, of course, um, I stand up um, basically about 90 million. Um, they stand with them. Um, they are a pillar of hope. But um, as I say, um, they compete under the Olympic flag. But the chef de monsieur, uh, the ambassador is here. So maybe I respond to that as well. Yes, uh, Madam Ambassador, the same question goes to you. When you compete in uh, these uh, yeah. international meets, how, how do you attribute credits to the various athletes that succeed in the various sporting disciplines? Well, I can say that these athletes, these athletes are very special because they are athletes for their work. And uh, mm. as uh, Mr. Bennett Rondo said, that um, when we are running Olympic, we are, we are under the umbrella of uh, uh, Olympic International Committee. Mm -hmm. And when they are running uh, IAAF, that is an uh, uh, athletic, um, IAAF, uh, today we they call uh, World Athletics, they also run uh, during that time under that umbrella. And therefore, our, our athletes represent even all of us, those who are not uh, refugees, but uh, when, you, when you represent the flag for the, for, for the whole world, I think we are also under, under, under this umbrella. Okay, even as much as the topic is sports as a peace building initiative and morale booster within global refugee communities, you, Madam Ambassador, have actually used sports as a peace building for communities within uh, here in the Republic of Kenya. What gave you the idea that uh, sports could be used as a peace building initiative? Sure, my brother, uh, when I was just a small kid uh, running from uh, chess training and, and I came from West Bogot, where everybody knows West Bogot was a, a, a very difficult uh, community. Uh, all the time, there was always fighting. And uh, when the kids uh, uh, play football, I come from the border of Marquette and, uh, and, and Bogot. So when there is conflict, the Bogot run their side and the Marquette put their side. But when there is a, a, a sports, the whole community, the families comes together. So I realized there is something that the uh, sports can unite. Of course, I went outside the country, and uh, when I was playing in Germany, many many nations that they they've been in conflict. They always they, they used to ask me to come to go and run for them, just to bring uh, 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 solidarity. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the countries that I went to uh, to compete is in uh, Indonesia during the conflict in Indonesia. Many other athletes from a different country like America, Australia, they were not allowed to, uh, to compete in, uh, in Indonesia and then they were also the victims themselves. So I asked my own government if it is possible for me to go to Indonesia because they have asked me. And so they told me that like, oh, why these people have been asking you. They know that you come from a very conflict area and you are very uh, courageous and strategic person. So I went there. And when I came there, we were with the, the head of state. And when they called the president, 
the, the, the public nobody wanted to know the president there, but when they call our names, <laughs> so it's almost, we are almost covered by the, by, by the uh, public. Mm -hmm. So this, I came back and then I say, I need to do something in the West because whereby all our communities across Karamoja and Glasta, that sports can unite uh, uh, people. That's when I started this initiative and I started in Parliament where I went to see um, uh, our uh, former uh, uh, Prime Minister Raila because he, he visited our area and it's uh, also a family friend. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then Mr. Morota, that's our, my MP, and Lena Kilimo, I said, I need you to help me to, to bring, uh, to use these sports to bring our people together because they've been fighting. And myself, I've been the victims. I lost family because of the war between the Margaret and Kokos. I lost animals to Uganda. So uh, I, I started uh, this uh, uh, project because of, uh, as, a, as, a, as a person who did a sports, but I was looking for a name and that's why I was fighting. I could have run for England, I could have run for Germany because I had issues with my federation. But I say, I come from West Coast and I have to fight and I will do something through sports. I had a name and that's when I came back. And I was supported by uh, the South Sudan and that is including the uh, Dr. Karang and Salva Kir and uh, uh, Riyang Majar wow. uh, for the first race in Kabangoria. Wow, that, that, that's amazing. So that's why I have that connect, connection of, uh, of, the, of the refugee from the kids from South, South Sudan. Both. Those are the leaders that they gave me support and they gave me ambassador to support me in, uh, during the preparations. So you realized a long time ago that uh, sports could be used as a way of conflict resolution? For sure. Uh, <laughs> I just want to also want to thank also other, other sponsors like IAA because I was their ambassador, as African ambassador, which also support me to, uh, to do this program. And then the IUC, these are the two uh, uh, families that they supported me all along. So as a sports people, we are, we are not conflict, we are not politicians, but we can always prepare a platform for people to come in, for anybody who can talk to pass the message. Because sports is a, a place where people come and respect one another. Yes, that's very true. Uh, Bernard, my question to you is, um, in the refugee camps that we have, how does one go about, especially like with the UNHCR, go about identifying sporting talent? Um, very good question, um, again, Chris. I mean, in all honesty, um, it's not very difficult to um, identify sporting talent because refugees are very talented. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, drive through or a walk through, uh, walk through the uh, refugee camp, you'll find refugees playing basketball, playing volleyball. Uh, doing morning runs, um, playing uh, volleyball, um, really, um, uh, all sorts of sports, uh, from chess to uh, scrabble to uh, tug of war, uh, really a whole range of, of uh, sports activities. Refugee youth are absolutely active. They are very talented. Mm -hmm. So it will not be difficult really to be able to pick up um, any good talent. Of course, for us, um, to be able to select the ones who, who made it to uh, to uh, Rio in 2016, mm -hmm. Ambassador used her uh, expertise from the Tekla Lorupe Peace Foundation and, of course, from um, Ambassador Tekla herself. We traveled with them to the refugee camp. We organized um, a competition and we selected, I mean, a cohort. I mean, I mean, and then we refined it. Uh, we refined that cohort and brought the group back to Nairobi now for uh, proper training. But um, as I say, refugees play sports from morning to evening. I mean, on weekends, if you go to the refugee camp, you'll find young people as, I mean, children as young as four or five playing, I mean, a particular sport, all the way to, you know, 20, 22, 24 there uh, playing football. So literally just by standing by the side of the field, you can just pick up um, uh, basically um, the top uh, footballers, if you want, top volleyball players, top netball players, top, I don't know, athletes. Um, really just because of the talent okay. and because of course they are in one place it is also easy to be able to just select because they are not in a very um, um, they are not widely scattered um, across the campus and uh, would you say that they because of the fact that they're in, in the camps already do they have uh, more uh, training facilities on a regular basis 
uh, since the, the perception is that because they, they are refugees, uh, they, they, they would tend to have more time on their hands. Notice I said the perception is because they're refugees, they would have more time on their hands for training in sports. Um, I'm not sure that's entirely correct there, Chris, because of course, uh, refugees also um, attend school like everybody else. They, uh, I mean, yeah, um, they've got jobs like, you know, in the camps like everybody else. Um, they run businesses like everybody else. Um, the little time that they've got, of course, first, um, I mean, and foremost is, I mean, is to organize for their livelihoods. Of course, children will go to school. Um, education is a number one priority. Uh, um, mostly, you'll find them playing um, just like uh, Kenyans would do, and any other um, um, sports people from across the world, they'll play in the morning and also play in the evenings. Um, and then uh, during the day, then they would do um, other activities, which would I mean, as I've mentioned, of course, going to school, going to businesses, um, getting involved with other issues, of course, with the uh, UNSCR and partners, um, ensuring that their, uh, their documentation is correct. Uh, yeah, so, of course, um, the little time they have, then they have to refine that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's why I said yeah. there's a perception. Because one of the things we do here at Kenyan National Sports Film Festival 2020 Virtual Edition is we don't only inform and entertain, but we also educate. So that perception is... Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I believe we've been joined totally by uh, Rose Lokonien Natike, uh, who I understand is a remarkable lady in her own right in terms of uh, refugee sports. Uh, welcome, Rose. And uh, please, as somebody who has first-hand experience of being a refugee sportswoman, tell us, what is it like to live and train in the camp? Well, thank you. I'm so honored. Uh, I was honored when I was competed in the Refugee Olympic team in 2016 because it was our first time to participate. Since uh, the UNHCR, the, the Tackle Europe Peace Foundation and DIOC has given us chance to compete, uh, it has given all the refugees chance to the hope around the world. So uh, for me, uh, as we are select I was selected as a flag bearer at the Olympic team. Uh, since then, uh, when we entered to the Maracana Stadium, the President Thomas Bach from IOC has uh, welcoming us to the warm club, especially with, the, with the, all the nationalities around the world uh, by wearing us, and it has given us hope for the refugees to at least participate, uh, and that was the chance that we had in the Olympics. Uh, I personally, I had an experience of uh, also competing in uh, international games, like uh, in 2017, I went to London World Championship, competing in 800 meters. Also, I went for to uh, Japan World Relays in 2019. Then also in 2019, the same, I went to Doha, where, where I set my personal best. Uh, in all these, uh, I have met very many new uh, friends around the world, especially the Kenyan athletes and also the people around the world that we used to interact with as a refugee team. Because uh, for us now, all the refugees around the world has given that chance so that they can they can participate in the in the all the Olympic that has coming on the other other special games that has coming on. Uh, to go on, uh, refugees are very talented. Uh, what we are set out to do in that uh, platform to showcase that what they can do, we set to do. All the refugees has the talent and the. They are also human beings like others that they can do. So, what, uh, what different sports do they participate in uh, at uh, like uh, Kakuma camp, for instance? Uh, well, in Kakuma refugee camp, uh, uh, they are involved in so many activities like football, uh, basketball, volleyball, so netball. Uh, whereby uh, some of them, they have the, the chance through sport has given them the the opportunity to get education and also to, to interact with the other communities and also the host communities uh, whereby we are living and also sport has promote uh, peace among themselves, especially to different nationalities around the world. Uh, we also got uh, Kakuma United and also KK Stars, uh, both females and uh, and male, whereby the the Kakuma United had that chance of uh, market school in, in, in competing with some of the uh, international with the with the host community whereby in 2018 and 2019 
the, 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 the they are unbeaten for most of the season in 2018 and 2019. Uh, the composition of the team promotes peace coexistence among the refugees and the host community in Turkana County, whereby uh, most of the people are coming together and uh, through through sport, uh, it has bring all the people together. That's very, very, very interesting and very encouraging to hear. Um, I also watched recently, the other day, I saw a, a documentary on, um, in fact, Bernard, this question is for you. I saw a documentary on uh, training young upcoming filmmakers in Kakuma. So this is a, a sports and a film festival. So we have the sports and we have the film. Is uh, UNHCR uh, actively involved in uh, projects such as this? Absolutely, Chris. Thank you very much. And um, we've got our partner, uh, Filmmade International, which um, handles film for uh, for the youth, and they run the Kakuma Got Talent. Um, if you haven't been there, Chris, you need to make a point um, of <laughs> coming down there. I'll Actually, um, <laughs> we are organizing now for auditions, mm -hmm. and you will find amazing uh, pieces of drama, dance, song. Uh, rap music by uh, refugee artists in Kakuma. Mm -hmm. They are also designers. They, really, a whole range. So we work with our partners. We work with our donors to ensure that we provide a platform. And I'm happy that that um, this forum also includes film as well, um, in addition to sports. And uh, really, just to ensure that we give our refugee youth all the opportunities to be all-rounded, to be able to. Um, if you cannot play football, then surely maybe you can sing or maybe you can compose uh, a song, or maybe you can dance, mm -hmm. just to ensure that you are making very good use of your time, Chris. Ah, thank you very much for that. So my question is to um, Ambassador. Um, I know you're involved in sports, but uh, this is a sports in a film festival. Do you think that um, a film can actually be used to uh, promote uh, peace building initiatives, especially focused on sports? Uh, for sure, as Mr. Ben has said, uh, every talent will count. Uh, because I want to tell my brother that not all the kids can run, not all the kids can play football. But they are talent somewhere, and that is film. And also, uh, if you see our, cha our chairman, uh, Mr. Karim, mm -hmm. he was uh, a, a, a cricket uh, a person, uh, one of the best in the, in, in, in the whole world. And therefore, when he finishes that career, there was another career after, after, after uh, cricket. And therefore, this is something that we are also uh, trying to engage our, our athletes, even those who are running. That after this, you have also another career. Why not to, uh, why not to go uh, into a uh, film uh, world? Exactly. And because when you see their challenge, for example, for example, like refugees, you leave your country, you go to very difficult uh, situations. Uh, uh, so those are the nar narratives that they should also put into the film so that other people can learn that, you know what, as much as we are doing, uh, as much as we have peace, we also have to have peace because when you see something really, really bad and these people survive, you don't want to be uh, like them. So you want to make peace in where you are. Exactly. So film is uh, something special for, uh, for anybody who wants to, uh, to think of that uh, uh, role. Thank you for that. And uh, Bernard, uh, my question to you is, uh, people look at the initials UN and think of this wonderful, magical, mystical organization. Do you work closely with the government in places like Kakuma camps, like government of the Republic of Kenya? Absolutely, Chris. I mean, all our, all our um, initiatives um, are hand in hand with the government of Kenya. In fact, uh, cup management is run by the government of Kenya and many other services. They, um, there is a refugee body actually under the Ministry of Interior. It's known as Refugee Affairs Secretariat. And we work very closely with them in Dadaab, in Kakuma, and in Nairobi as well. And in many other places where refugees are in Kenya, in Kitale, in Eldoret, in Mombasa, we cannot do anything without the government of Kenya. They are the ones who we really collaborate with them at all levels of our implementation and interventions. Okay. When you mentioned uh, you, um, the, the department in the interior, um, do internally displaced people fall under the category of refugees? Uh, they don't fall under the category of refugees, but UNHCR's mandate um, is refugees, asylum seekers, mm -hmm. uh, stateless people, and um, internally displaced persons. So mm -hmm. those are the particular uh, populations um, of concern 
that UNHCR is mandated to uh, to support. Mm -hmm. So, of course, refugees is one group. Uh, asylum seekers is another. Um, stateless persons is another. And uh, internally displaced persons is um, is another group as well. All those ones fall under the, uh, the UN Refugee Agency. Okay, Rose, if you're still with us, um, what other sports do you participate in? Uh, uh, before then, I joined an athletic. I was a footballer. Mm -hmm. Because in Kakuma refugees, we had so many competitions whereby it is going on, created by the, supported by UNSCR and the LWA World Zotara Foldersh. Uh, then also, I have to join the, the athletics as well. And also, during inter-school competition, that's when we started now running and also doing some other activities. Because in, in Kakuma, we have so many talented people uh, whereby they don't have only that chance of getting an opportunity, but at least they can have that time of uh, getting a, being in a sport so that they, they bring people together because sport is for, it's for all of us, being it young or uh, old, sport is good and also it, it creates peace among, among, the, among the people around the world and okay. it also changes the perception here. Okay, Bernard, mm -hmm. um, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, does um, does he view uh, Kakuma camp, I, I, I mean all reports seem to say it's one of the biggest refugee camps in the world, does he view it in a very special light, sir? Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what you mean by special lights. Um, for sure, what we do, uh, what I know that the United Nations and UNHCR does, we feel, I mean, we view all our all our persons of concern um, as, uh, I mean, as special, of course, they've got special talents. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can tell you for sure what's happening now, for instance, in, I mean, in Kakuma, we've got something called Kisida, mm -hmm. which is a Kalabaye, into, um, uh, basically some, uh, it's, um, it's a way that uh, UNHCR and the county government of Turkana is working together to ensure that both refugees and the host communities are receiving services, are treated well, and that interventions ensure that both refugees and host communities benefit. Um, I'm not sure about um, exactly what you mean by special status, but of course, I mean, our, uh, persons of concern are special to all of us. Um, and in terms of uh, cooperation, you did mention the uh, national government. How do you work with the county government? The county government, um, we, 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 of course, we work with them in very many other interventions. I can tell you, we, I mean, we have, we have so many programs together mm -hmm. um, in terms of ensuring that, I mean, that the local community is supported as well in education. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, we, I mean, we watch it of education. Um, in the country and the county executive for education as well, county executive for health and the Ministry of Health, especially now with COVID. I mean, every intervention, we have meetings that we sit together where, I mean, where we, I mean, we share ideas and, um, and we discuss various aspects, um, I mean, of how to support both host communities and refugees. So, I mean, we, 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 um, we discuss at various levels um, with the host community and with the county government and with the national government as well. Would you be in support of um, organizations such as the Kenya International Sports Film Festival uh, actually coming to visit Kakuma and actually see and meet the athletes and film them as they go about their sporting activities and also create awareness and be able to inform the public as well as educate them on what exactly uh, refugee sports is? Thanks, Chris. Yes, um, as I mentioned before, um, camp management—I mean, camp management—is under the Refugee Affairs Secretariat, mm -hmm. which is—I uh, mean, which is a secretariat under the Ministry of Interior. Mm -hmm. uh, for somebody to visit um, any refugee camp, there are some, um, uh, somebody will need, of course, to contact RAS, the Refugee Affairs Secretariat, mm -hmm. to explain exactly what they need to, um, what they are planning to do in the camp. Mm -hmm. Then after that, then. Um, when they've been authorized, then we will be more than happy to work with them to ensure that their visit is successful. Okay. Uh, Ambassador, <laughs> because you already have inroads. 
into this avenue. Rose, <laughs> would you like us to visit you from the Kenya International Sports Film Festival to see how you go about with your training, how you interact with your fellow refugees? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. <laughs> thank you very yeah, much. I'll be very glad to. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Ambassador, are you in a position to yes. uh, at least uh, initiate this particular process? But uh, uh, I will be ready when you are ready to bring your, your training shoes also. It's not going to be uh, just alone. <laughs> no, we'll because, run. We'll, uh, we'll run with you. If you need, yes, if you need a coach, we have also been a drone who is also training long distance and volleyball, and, there, and therefore we'll be happy to bring you together. To, uh, wait, to wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bernard, you're, you're, you're doing what? what? You're training in what? <laughs> I do a lot of things. Um, Ambassador, of course, um, is being very, very polite. But um, <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I play a lot of volleyball. I play a lot of football. I'm, I'm, uh, I do a lot of running um, of late. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Ambassador. <laughs> Don't worry. We, we, we will walk or we shall run together. <laughs> <laughs> on this particular point. I will be your coach, Chris. I will be your coach, Chris. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will be very nice and polite. <laughs> there's me. There's Mr. Karim. There's Madam Duta. There, there's there's quite a few of us. Huh? <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you so much but, for your time. But, but, but anyway. Um, yes. Yes, Ambassador. I wanted to ask also not... I wanted to ask not only about the film. Mr. Karim was, Mr. Karim was a very renowned uh, cricket uh, player. Yes. And then we we'll, would we'll love to have lots of cricket uh, in, in, in Kakuma as I talk with you, Mr. Karim. So exactly. please, bring exactly. all the sticks there. And that's why we, we at the Kenya International Sports Film Festival, we also like to bring people together on an international level. Bernard, thank you so much. You have been very instrumental in this panel. Um, you have brought an insight, uh, an awareness that uh, has not been there before. Like I said, when it comes to the world of uh, refugees, uh, asylum seekers, internally displaced people, there is uh, always a perception that is, for the most part, a misperception. Am I right? Absolutely. Thank you. Ambassador, as always, thank you very much. You are truly a treasure and an asset to the Kenya International Sportsman Festival. Thank you. You're welcome. And Rose, it is a pleasure to meet you, but I look forward to meeting you and we look forward to meeting you in person in the not too distant future. And that has been our Thank panel you. on sports as a peace building initiative and morale booster within global refugee communities here at the Kenya International Sports Film Festival 2020, the virtual edition. And coming up next, we have a movie from the Netherlands fixed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.